So, this being the first lecture of the course, uh, I think I would like to interact with you and uh, my PhD scholars are also with me here and this is sort of a informal session which we are going to have today with all of you to understand the mutual requirements, fine. By mutual requirements I mean to say that uh, I would like to understand what are your intentions of taking this course and uh, you should get an idea about what we are going to uh, do for another say about 30, 34 lectures, alright and for the entire semester. Basic thing which the society needs to develop and move forward and we are the pioneers in it exactly. I am Sandesh. Sandesh. Sandesh Patel. Yes, please. So, uh, the things we learn here uh, actually the human relationships include shelter and we are humans which uh, we develop shelter and actually the human basic human basic needs. For example, transportation engineer, geotechnical engineer. These, these things are applied in day to day life on a vast uh, in a vast field. So, I think that's why we should be proud of and we are the oldest branch in engineering. Okay. How about you? Okay. Yeah, it's fine now. Every, sorry? Every person uses buildings. That's right. And you are proud to be a civil engineer because of this. Okay. Next. So, safety is the key word in your opinion, but safety is in any branch of engineering, is it not? So, you are basically a proud engineer in making, ok. And don't copy the answer, you see, it should be original, as, as original as possible, yeah. You are basically excited about the mega ness associated with the projects. You know, it's not milli and it's not micro; it is all mega, giga. So, even a slice of the mistake can impact the outcome of your company. Very good. Next. Yeah, I am 
and uh, whenever we compare or measure or convert or even as a level uh, we get it that's in fact will be a major factor and contributing to that factor it would be a crowd forming and uh, throughout the process uh, in the city in india we interact uh, apart from that we interact with the professionals and all the experienced people to their guidance we tend to learn many more things and we would like to apply that skill that would also be a good thing in my opinion So it's a perpetual engineering in your opinion it was there it is there and could be there that's what you want to say I won't say I am ashamed to uh, to be civil engineer, but I don't really like structured part of the civil engineering. But I like the day part of civil engineering, which is related to uh, water related issues and environment. So that's why I took this course. And I am not uh, completely not at all. Uh, so you don't like structures at all, but you like water plus environment. All right. Yes. Okay. Good. Sir, I believe uh, going to the very basic. Initially, engineering was devised into one for civilians and one for def uh, defense. So, uh, civil was anything that was related to human life. For example, infrastructure, roadways, or uh, transportation facilities, environment, anything and uh, everything that affects people directly. So, and al already as pointed out by my friend that uh, a country's economy is directly landed upon its infrastructure development. So I'm proud to be a civil engineer because we have that responsibility that we can directly contribute to that area. Nice. Yes, please. Uh, my name is Vipul. Vipul. Uh, yeah. I'm proud to be a civil engineer because I believe that it is one of the oldest branch of engineering. Uh, all other branches of engineering are not necessary for our life. Like the three things that are considered basic for our life are food, shelter, and security. And shelter is the one thing that depends on civil engineering. And the things that are considered the wonders in the world, that the seven wonders, we consider them that are also built by the civil engineers. And the tourism industry, that also depends on civil engineering. So I think that factors make me believe that I am proud to be a civil engineer. So in the due course of time, you'll realize that uh, uh, C. 488 which I offer as environmental geotechnics is a interdisciplinary course, number one. Though I cite several examples which are coming out of and related to civil engineering, but I am sure that in the due course of time you will realize that we need help and we are taking a lot of inputs from different professionals and this is how the subject is growing. And when I start introducing myself, I will show you what I am doing and some of my PhD scholars who are sitting here, I have called them purposefully because this course requires a very open mind to understand what is being done. And before some of you came, we were discussing about why you are proud of being a civil engineer. Now I can refine my question and I can say why you are proud to be an engineer or a technologist, fine. So this is what actually we were discussing and this boy was saying something. I am Subhasis Panda. Uh, I am proud to be a civil engineer because as yes. I wanted to say that uh, we come across construction management and techniques which help us to efficiently and effectively manage large projects which is also required. And also nowadays there is a growing issue of sustainability. So there is a research, go there is research, uh, research going on. Awareness. Awareness going on. There is awareness regarding sustainability mm -hmm. and sustainability has become a very big issue. Yes. So Fine. we need to uh, find out materials which are sustainable so that we construct very good. and
stuff so that uh, they are sustainable Excellent. and there is also uh, the environmental concerns so green buildings and all are also uh, thought in yeah, civil so sustainability itself includes green buildings yes. uh, being a civil engineer i feel proud to uh, come up with something which takes a meticulous planning and uh, resources and uh, put it in a way uh, which makes a uh, recognition to last for a very long time so i think it the feeling of uh, having such a thing uh, which is uh, very such uh, means which has a re- recognition for a, a long years uh, i think this is a good feeling for me to be okay let's team. let's talk to some non civil engineers yes please metallurgists yeah what is the what was the idea behind uh, opting this course okay imani yeah you are from metallurgy okay you know what is common between your profession and my profession is that we do a lot of characterization so as a soil engineer i deal with the soils rocks and different building materials and we tend to characterize them that's what you do i think in metallurgy you you characterize minerals metals and composites is it not so there is a lot of common in fact you will be glad to know that my research group is the research group which utilizes the facilities in metallurgy department maximum you know for characterization of uh, different type of samples which you bring from different places good next you are also a metallurgist oh you are from civil engineering yes please your name arushi arushi yes Yeah, shelter is the basic requirement. That's fine. Apart from that, what comes to your mind? Why you should be a proud of being a civil engineer? Yeah, now it's fine. very good yeah very good so what he does so a reason of bringing a bring a forms right now so i just wanted to know what's it like i know particular integration can be course but i know can be done to pass in this class right now so so this is a good interesting side of it just to see what it's about What's your perception about uh, civil engineering and what we are going to discuss in this course? Yes, please. My name is Ashutosh. Uh, so, like most of the materials used by civil engineers are actually like manufactured using the plants which are uh, constructed by chemical engineers. Like the plants that form like concrete or cement, they are actually uh, designed or architected by chemical engineers because they design the process which will be happening, happening or which is uh, which will be used to. Uh, manufacture those substances and also there is a relation between chemical engineers and civil engineers so that's what i think you are right up to a certain extent you are right in fact uh, i collaborate quite a lot with the chemical engineers also and you will realize subsequently that uh, our interests are very common like you talk about you are a fourth year student fourth to third year you must have done, done some courses in the mass transport so mass transport is a very normal subject which we discuss in civil engineer also so might be you talk about maybe gas transport or fluid phase transport or the combined coupled phenomena <clears throat> now when some of my phd scholars will speak then you will realize that uh, truly speaking in today's world uh, we cannot say i am a engineer you are an electrical engineer somebody is a chemical engineer or metallurgist and something like this because these boundaries are slowly and slowly disappearing 
and what we are doing is mostly technology all right it's not the engineering and when you are doing technology you use engineering subjects as a tool you use them as tools all right to get the solution or answer to your question now this is what the attempt is through this course to pass on to the generation like you that you know this is a sort of a new phase of the civil engineering where some of you are talking about basic requirements basic requirements will always be there infrastructure is something which many of you have talked about infrastructure definitely is a big issue but when you add sustainability associated with the infrastructure this becomes something different now somebody was talking about water environment water environment is an integral part of this ecosystem and what we do as a civil engineer or any technologist is we just try to play with the ingredients of the nature and we try to create something which we would have wanted to clear okay? now a simple way to describe what you are saying is you don't like structural engineering and you like environmental engineering water and what resources we talk about the interaction problem quite a lot you know soil structure interaction soil water interaction structure water interaction and so on now at the same time the people like you know who are devising compiler systems and those who are devising say electrical engineers and electronics people and biotechnologists the type of system they are devising are very helpful for us to monitor something in our subject suppose if i am trying to create a project and i want to observe you know how this system is going to behave in the long run i require monitoring i require some sensing techniques and the amount of data which i am generating is huge clear and this data cannot be analyzed unless i have a good system on which the compilation of the data can be done and the results can be obtained engineers are the one who directly serves to the public like uh, uh, whichever uh, whatever facility we develop or whatever construct or uh, whatever we uh, facility that uh, that we are developing that will be directly serving to the public so that's why uh, i think being being civil engineer is a proud moment very nice so as far as i am concerned i am dn singh and i joined this institute about uh, 22 23 years back i used to be from iit kanpur but now i am a hard hardcore iit bombay i spent pretty long time there at iit kanpur did my btech mtech and phd all together and then i came to this profession i joined here in 1994 now this course which i am going to discuss i started maybe about 10 15 years back and the history is like this that i was i used to teach soil mechanics during those days and uh, engineering mechanics to first year students and then one of the guys asked me a question that why you are wasting your time here teaching <laughs> you didn't get anything else better than this so then i realized okay let me do something interesting and uh, i think that was the time during 1998 99 i started playing with this two subjects which are very prominent in civil engineering environmental engineering and geotechnical engineering for those of you who are not from civil engineering environment everybody understands what environmental engineer does in fact some part of chemical engineering itself is environmental science where you talk about pollution air dispersion all sorts of gases contaminating the entire thing geotechnical engineering per se is the subject which deals with something which is either on the surface and when we say surface this is the ground fine and something which is beneath it subsurface like foundations you are sitting in a building it must be having foundations which are going down you go to bandra valley ceiling some of you must have broke through the foundations are at least 40 50 meter deep invisible you know there is a water column and the foundations are embedded deep into the hard rock so by profession geotechnical engineers deal with something which is either soil or rocks or the ground water 
Now this was the definition of civil engineering and geotechnical engineers say few years back. Now what I have tried to do is, I have tried to change the definition of my profession very systematically and what you will realize is that as a geotechnical engineer, what I realize is that my role has become a very multidisciplinary role. I am a civil engineer by my profession. I became a geotechnical engineer by my expertise and then slowly and slowly I realize that these two subjects are not sufficient enough to solve the problems of the society and when I say society, this is all sort, all the domains, all the spheres of the society, be it industry, be it the politics, be it the municipal corporation, be it the general population or whatever. So the type of problems these domains are facing cannot be solved with the rigid components and the consent, uh, sorry. Uh, components and the concepts of the subjects like environmental engineering and geotechnical engineering. Now that was the time when this bug came in mind and started playing with the concepts and I started creating new concepts which are known as environmental geotechnics. In short, what I am trying to do is I am trying to challenge the theories which you have studied until now. I bulldoze the concepts which have been given by our great grandfathers. And I tell that these concepts are not contemporary. You know, same thing I always tell these IITs are not contemporary as the ones through which we went through. So, IIT system requires a complete overhaul. IITs of 70s, 80s, and 90s, and IITs of 2000 plus are totally different places. They are not contemporary, clear? So, you require an overhaul. Now, this was the bug in the mind and started working on this subject and then. I took help from various disciplines. So, in the due course of time, you will realize that my PhD scholars, they go all across different departments and institutes, they interact with them, learn the concepts and we amalgamate them with the concepts of civil engineering and geotechnical engineering to obtain the solution to our problems and give it back to the industry, fine. Now, this is where I feel that environmental geotechnics is something quite interesting for the people who have very open mind and who are very good critics. The whole idea of this discussion is not to create followers, please remember. The whole idea is to create people who can be leaders tomorrow, who can challenge and those who do not listen to me as a Brahma Sutra and Brahma Vakya. You got the point? So, I, I, I require people who can say, no, what you are saying is not correct. This is what it should be like this because the knowledge is expanding, the concepts are changing every day. And there is nothing known as 1 plus 1 equal to 2, that theory does not exist here. So, what I have realized is that this course actually is very beneficial for the people who have very open mind, who are very creative and those who are interested in doing something on their own. That means entrepreneurship. So, this is the last time I am using the word course, henceforth I am never going to use the word course here. It is not a course actually we are going to have a discussion. So, though it says CE 488 and this is a course, truly speaking, we are going to have more of discussions. So, truly speaking, there is not any fixed syllabus which I am going to follow. The syllabus gets formed when we discuss something and you come out with an answer and we think, oh yes, this is something which should be discussed in great details. So, do not expect something which is very stereotype and you know copy book type of a thing. We will discuss during most of the semester various issues, various challenges and it is more of you know problem solving. Unfortunately, 100 percent of the problem solving cannot be discussed in the class because most of the projects which we do are sponsored by industries. But yes, indirectly if your mind is sharp and if you are attentive and if you know how to get the information from me or from my students, you are most welcome. There is no bar on that, clear? So, it is up to you what you want to extract, how much and it is up to me how much I will reveal. But yes, you will get some idea about what is happening in the world around and what is the role of technologists in today's world. And forget about now civil engineering, chemical engineering, electrical engineering, all these disciplines. Is this okay? We are all same, our tools are different. 
this is fine. Now, coming back to my personal profile, uh, when I fiddled with this subject and I created a new stream, I started guiding a lot of PhDs and uh, I, I was always interacting with a lot of industries, you know. If you go through my web page, I mean you will find a big list of the projects which I have done in and around Bombay city, it is a huge list. I must have done more than 700 projects by this time and sometimes I can always if you if you come along with me to any part of the city or for that matter some parts of the country I can tell you what I have done. Now why I am telling you this is, it is very important that what you study should have some application, clear? You can mug up some equation x plus y equal to z, it has no meaning unless you apply it somewhere. So, as a civil engineer, some of you are saying that you get satisfaction when you see the infrastructure and the buildings, you know, where you visit. A civil engineer's delight is to do something, create it and then observe it forever and that is where sustainability comes in the picture. So, most of my discussion which I am going to do with you is because of my learning and my association with these industries, clear? Yeah. Now, coming to the second part, I would say this is my research group and the basic intention of calling all of them over here is please feel free to interact with them, fine, any time of the day, of course with their prior consent. If you visit my website, you can, Dr. Soumya is here, uh, she is my postdoc and she is a microbiologist because civil engineering without microbiology is incomplete. So, she is going to introduce yourself, can you please come here and just speak maybe few words and just to give them an idea about why you are here in our group and what you are doing. Hello, uh, hi, I am uh, Soumya, professor introduced, I am a postdoctoral fellow in the group. Uh, I academically speaking, I am not, I am a non-civil engineer as uh, professor said. I have done my masters and uh, my bachelors, masters, PhD, everything in biotechnology, particularly in microbiology. And um, see, uh, now people when, I think when professor was asking why you people are uh, proud to be civil engineers, many of you pointed out about environment. So, it includes environment, yeah, in this course is also on environmental geotechnics. So, when you say environment, you cannot exclude it of life. So, that life tells you why I am in this group. So, which was until now neglected by the um, civil engineers, I can say. But uh, recently, if you go through uh, from around 5 to 10 years, uh, you see the research has started in this area, which is called as biogeo interface. And I think in the due course of this, uh, discussion or course, you will come to know what exactly we do in the group has uh, where in this biogeo interface is connected and uh, yeah, why, what is the importance of this interdisciplinary research. And yeah, finally, um, I, I, I'd like to say this time, I think this is the third, uh, I'm here uh, in this group from 2014 November and it, this is the third time I am attending this uh, uh, course or discussion. So, I, until now I didn't find anyone uh, from the other uh, department. I was the only odd man out and I am happy this time I could see many more, not from biotech but from the uh, like computers, metallurgy and chemical. I am sure you people at the end of this course you will know what you will um, um, uh, where you can fit in in civil uh, in civil engineering department and one thing you people have to know is you might be from any department only when you speak to a person from the other department you will understand what you can do in that uh, uh, field so everything is interdisciplinary there is networking complete networking so that you have to know for example uh, remediation I think you people uh, know about remediation and have you heard about remediation? No. Uh, okay, at least mining. Yes. Okay, so the mining waste, tailing ponds where the mining waste are there. Uh, the simple example is the MSW. 
municipal solid waste have you people heard of this so yeah sanitation so here when you say msw or when you say the decomposition what brings this decomposition it's nothing but the microbes what so without adding any chemical or um, any technology you just leave the waste like that it starts de decomposing so that is because of microbes but till now usually people don't uh, uh, see it in a scientific way or uh, uh, they just dump it there and just leave it but when once you start observing it or studying it in a scientific way you can uh, study how you can uh, fasten up this process of decomposition or degradation so this is one example where we uh, deal I mean we work together so we find out so which microbes can be used for which decomposition or how you can fasten up so what temperature is require, required for the uh, living organisms to survive in that and the other example I can uh, give is a phytostabilization so you might have heard this the slope uh, it's, it's slopes and you might have seen uh, in the uh, the roadside where they have put some uh, plantations so and this I think it will uh, I don't know the uh, exact term. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. So they, uh, because of this plant growing there, so it can stabilize that environment or that ground. So it can uh, 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 prevent the uh, what is it? Soil erosion. Uh, yeah, soil erosion and that falling of. Yes, it can give the stability. So that is because of this root. So. Uh, where you grow the plant. So these are called as phytostabilization. There are so many other things like phytoremediation uh, where you grow the plants and it takes up the uh, the contaminant. So it you work with the sanitation and then um, I think yeah so this these uh, two examples are fine for now and we will yeah. uh, know it in the due course into the fundamentals of uh, civil engineering or the geotech where we apply this biotechnology. Perfect these subjects in today's world and civil engineers are the best poised to become experts in these subjects because you'll realize slowly that which cannot be employed for uh, the type of uh, top, talking about let's say remediation of contaminated soils and the hillocks which are unstable. Hello my name is Jeevan I am a third year research scholar working with processing. I am working in the area of uh, a relatively new area in geotechnical engineering and it is called as methane gas hydrates so i have this is something which is very close to chemical engineers by heart you know have chemical anyone heard about that hydrates have you heard about it no actually methane gas hydrates are basically methane gas which is embedded beneath the ocean bed as well as permafrost region so what happens is wherever locations we have very high pressures and very low temperatures this methane gas just get trapped inside molecules of water so we know that the conventional oil and gas reserves, it is getting uh, depleted. Now the entire world is after fuel, alternative resources and all those things. Now to come to my point, uh, almost 60% of world carbon is being stored in the form of methane gas hydrates beneath the ocean bed. Now India has also did some steps trying to extract methane gas hydrate out of that. So our project is being awarded by ONGC, Oil and Natural Gas Corporation. So what the basically the area which I am trying to locate is I am trying to understand the permeability which means how easily this gas the methane gas it can be taken out from the ocean bed through the sediments. So we will be taking the help of my RPC members are from chemical department. So over where we used to address the issues like coupled phenomenon how gas is going to migrate through water how I mean the easiness of extracting gas depends I mean it will tell what's the economics whether it is practically feasible to go for such a technique or not. So I am trying to, uh, the research component is I am trying to see the permeability aspect. Means how easily these gases can flow or the coupled phenomenon, how easily these gases can flow through a multi-phase system and how easily we can trap it. We now it about flow of, uh, fluid through porous media, soils let us say. Now this is one stage ahead of it where we are trying to study how multi-phase fluid like crude oil, gases and water pass through saturated soils sediments fine and then there is a lot of cryogenics associated with this and there is a lot of environmental issues associated with this. If I lower the temperature and if I increase the pressure 
Now this is what the situation is existing beneath the ocean bed. Hi, myself Shashank. Uh, I'm a third year uh, research scholar with Professor Singh. So I am working in the area of uh, biogeo interface uh, with Dr. Soumya. Uh, so she has already talked about uh, where biotechnology is being uh, utilized by civil engineers. Uh, to add a few more points to that, uh, it's not necessarily, uh, I mean, in addition to whatever she has talked about, uh, like consider a uh, ground uh, like normally what a ground improvement techniques is adopted like whenever you have ground conditions which are unsuitable for uh, or unfavorable ground conditions where you cannot construct any uh, infrastructure facility you go for uh, modifying the ground which is mostly based on physical or chemical aspects so physical aspects uh, physical methods are uh, still fine but uh, chemical methods whenever you adopt it's mostly uh, going to harm the uh, environment and in order to avoid this nowadays uh, the buzz in the market is that you have to go for sustainable techniques like uh, biomediated processes where you are uh, instead of chemicals you are adopting biological organisms to improve your ground conditions so I am working in one such uh, area of uh, biogeo interface where uh, we are trying to improve the properties of uh, Suppose if, soils. You, if I give you a challenge that, uh, you know, western part of the country where desert is, it is contributing to the pollution of NCR. I hope you will agree with this. Most of the dust particles and the sand particles, you know, they become airborne and they come towards the mainland and ultimately they hold camouflaging is being done. Now one of the ways to come out of this situation could be if I stabilize the desert sands not chemically, not physically, not mechanically but I, by, by using some microbial activity which is sustaining in the sand and by enhancing it. Right? Now this was the same theme when he started working on his PhD thesis that how these microbial activity can be utilized for strengthening the particles, binding them together so that there is no pollution because of this. Collaborating with the, our nano sensor group here in electrical engineering and this is where a lot of computer scientists also come and sit with us where we are trying to do integration of the sensors as I said for monitoring a particular parameter in the soil like this could be the moisture content, this could be the density which you achieve in situ. It could be the transport of contaminants from one place to another place or the flow of groundwater in the subsurface from one point to another point and another point. So these are the issues are becoming very, very pertinent and uh, this is where, you know, the sensing techniques are becoming important in civil engineering and its monitoring. Uh, he is this person who is uh, doing his PhD in uh, CRNTS, Vinay. He is about to submit his PhD. He is also into MEMS based sensors, microelectronic mechanical systems. And this is what actually we are devising for sensing the moisture in the soil. Those of you who have done courses in soil mechanics would realize that moisture content is the parameter which controls most of the properties of the soil mass, including the strength, compressibility, shear strength, everything, is it not? So it becomes very important many a times to measure the moisture content under in situ conditions, not in the laboratory, because there is no way you bring a sample to the lab from the field. And then you know that there is a lot of disturbance to the sample and the moisture may get altered. Hello, uh, myself Prakshit. I am in my second year uh, doing research now. Uh, basically my area of interest lies in the uh, coastal engineering, uh, the geotechnical engineering near to the coastal areas of the uh, nation or the world. So basically what changes here is uh, the problems associated, naturally we deal across the problems which are uh, near to the coastal, coastal regions. So, one of the major thing that we find in the coastal region which would affect the economy since few of you talked about the helping society and the scale of the project uh, that affects the civil engineering that uh, motivates you uh, to be a proud civil engineer is the scale of the project, right? So, we, uh, the port is a sector which is fine in the co court area, uh, coastal region and uh, these are really uh, big infrastructure projects that are being coming up in the port sector. So what happens is that being a conventional geotechnical engineering, all the tests and other things are being uh, designed for the terrestrial region. The interface of this land and water where the material property changes, these things are being not addressed to. 
So how this is the technical part of the work that we are interested in to. So basically we also have a land constraint in majority of the areas near to coast. These are highly populated as many of you also know. Now of strategic importance, yeah, why? This is, yeah, these are two, uh, I mean, examples which use the same technology, but uh, they, they, we call it reclamation or dumping of uh, soils. Basically, that's the process though. One is for military significance and others is for civilian purpose. So basically, the constraint of land is being uh, addressed there. Where do you get these materials from? Basically, resource crunch ultimately will uh, uh, end up in the broader area of the sustainable development, wherein the materials, how, how to utilize the materials which we have taken out or thought of a waste and where it can be used successfully. So basically what happens is I told of the problems that are being near the port region. One of them is like to maintain the depth of the ships uh, that comes to birth in the port area. So basically we need to maintain something co called as navigational channel. You can imagine this thing to be of like underwater highways where this will also have the slope and we dress the uh, channels to uh, get the uh, soil material. We throw this out material basically, but this should not be done, uh, especially considering the resource constraint we have. Now, this is what actually discussing. I want to land which is man made, artificially created. You know, this is what actually is trying to study and what we call it as dredging and reclamation. That means you dredge the material from the sea, use it for a, an island. And this is how the infrastructure in the middle of the seas is being done. Now, as he said, it could be strategic or it could be for civilians. It depends upon your requirements. Now, most of the nations in the world right now are trying to expand their physical boundaries. What is happening to Bombay city? Look at the population density. It's becoming a big crunch. Clear? What we have to do? We have to expand. Are you aware of that the that Bombay city is also expanding? Do you have any idea? There is land which is being created in the sea and this part is also becoming a part of Bombay city. Are you aware of this? So this is where today's geotechnical engineering and civil engineering is heading to. Fine. I hope you must be getting an idea. Artificially creation of land in offshore environment. Hello everyone, I am Agnes, second year research scholar working with Professor. So as you have all discussed like civil engineering or being a civil engineer, civil engineer is like being committed to the society and it basically involves the expanding of infrastructure which contributes to the economy of the nation. So due to this rapid uh, development, something which is very inevitable in our social life is the generation of municipal solid waste. And in this context where uh, space is a big constraint and the pollution of the geo environment is a serious issue or a big issue, it is high time we come up with technologies which can enhance or rapidize the degradation of the municipal solid waste. And you might have very recently come across uh, uh, the issues in Devnar landfill where it had caught fire and there were issues related to polluting the environment all such things. So it is now we are we cannot just dump uh, the waste in a very uncivilized or unscientific unengineered manner. So it, uh, we I am working on a technology which was developed in 1975 but refined in uh, it's known as a bioreactor landfill and my project is actually my research is actually sponsored uh, by the bioreactor landfill which is the only one in India currently, it, it is located very close to our institute in Kanjurmar. So I do field scale studies, always in laboratory studies where you can, uh, you know, have a better control on the properties. It is not the case when you go to a field. There are social issues, operational issues, executional issues. So all these are apart from risk, I mean, which come when, when it comes into research, it is a overall uh, situation where uh, we have to come up with technologies which can give a sustainable solution. So uh, this is what I currently research upon. Thank you.
to uh, environmental scientists. But uh, there are a lot of issues which are forcing geotechnical engineers also to venture into this subject. And uh, in the due course of time, you will realize that what is the necessity of, you know, upon this subject, engineers and similarly. Hi, hello everyone. I am Gandraj, first year PhD scholar, working in the area of sustainable utilization of industrial byproducts in infrastructure development. As you told, the key words are sustainability and infrastructure development in the current era. So, my project is associated with one of the industrial byproduct which is produced significantly in all over the world. It is uh, the bauxite residue which is the byproduct associated with the alumina production in alumina industries. So, yeah, during the process ex of extraction of this alumina from the bauxite ore, they are using the process of Bayer's process of extraction, you might be knowing. And this process, they are adding, in this process, they are adding high alkalinity and as a result of this, the residue will also contain some residual alkalinity which make it difficult to dump in rural, in dumping yards. So, if we dump it, what happens is that in due course of time, something alkalinity or some heavy metals will start leaching out from these residues and contaminate the ground and water and even air. So how to how to use this material rather than dumping it in the fields? That is what I am looking for. Basically, metal forming and metal producing industries, and some of you must have heard this name, uh, mine tailings. Have you come across the term mine tailings? When you extract the ores, when you process them, when you extract the minerals, and whatever. Any part of the country for the big industry which are remaining there after extraction of the metal. You go to any part of the country, and in fact, in case there is industry associated with it, as a result, you must be seeing man made mountains in every part of the country at least. You go to Jharkhand area where most of the mining operations are going on and most of the refining, you they take out the mineral and whatever remains is tail, mining tails. Clear? So, we will discuss about this much more subsequent. Hello everyone, as professor mentioned that uh, I am a DCTD fellow. So, here there is a one Tata center which is an interdisciplinary center where we work together with different departments. So, we have students from chemical engineering, then electrical engineering and we normally work on the social issue that society is facing right now and we are trying for the sustainable and affordable solution which we can provide to the society. And uh, I am working on this societal issue and the most, the one of the prevailing issue that now society is telling is how to manage the municipal solid waste as Agnes already mentioned. So, you must have observed that every day there are thousands of trucks are moving through the road in front of IIT main gate. So, this is a not a good sign for a society, a city like Mumbai where land is the big issue. So, the Devnar and two, three others landfill which is consuming huge hectares of land. Whereas the land is so costly, we can't compromise on this landfill. So, my work is to how to efficiently manage this municipal solid waste with some techniques. So, it may be microbial degradation or any other means of techniques so that we can utilize the land also for our infrastructure. Because as a civil engineer, our 
main aim is to develop infrastructure and for that we required space. So one of the issue if we solve it how to utilize the material or let's say how to utilize the land. So that could be a good uh, giving to the society. So here I am working on mainly the most uh, non-degradable fraction that normally polymers. You must have noticed that polymers are normally non-microbial attack means it is resistance to microbial attack and there are so many issues like in drain, then landfill, then sea water, the polymers are clogged and it is destroying the ecosystem of that particular environment. So I am trying to find out the solution how to manage this material so that we can get rid of this issues or hazard because of the polymeric material. Uh, he is Srikant Kandalai who is also work on uh, gas hydrates. This is a pan IIT Bombay ONGC project which we won uh, about one year back. It is a huge project uh, where we are trying to simulate hydrate crystals in the laboratory. And the another one is uh, Sainish Venjamuri and Sainish is an expert in mining. So I wanted to learn mining a bit. Now coming back to the issue, uh, you must have realized this is a very big spectrum of activities which you are into and I am sure you will realize that everything cannot be discussed in the class. Uh, these are the topics on which we work. The you can go to the entire list of course we will be discussing about these topics in the due course of time. Uh, these are all new concepts, new, N-E-O, new, not new in the in the subject. And uh, these are the topics which you know industries asked us to work on and to give them a solution. So we started, I mean like I have to survive and as I said this is my personal lab so I take money from the industry and I have to give salaries to my students. I have to buy the equipments and it's a self-sustained system. So I have to survive, get the money from the industry, use it for my development, for their research work and so on. So these are topics which you can glance through uh, which are being pursued by my students at this stage. And where a lot of money is, uh, you know, being attracted for our research. Incidentally, I would like to bring to your notice one journal which I launched about uh, three years back and the title of the journal is same as that of this course, fine. Now this is the journal which I started in about 2011 and uh, I publish it from ICE UK. Institution of Civil Engineers UK. What I suggest is you should go through the editorial which I wrote few years back. So this is the editorial board which should give you an idea about you know from which part of the world who is coming and contributing and you can just go through it whenever you have I mean these are the guys who are the best in the world in the environmental geotechnics and my suggestion is try to go through the web page and in case you want to have a tie up with them, I am doing an event in Goa but where you are not invited at this moment, I have to select you know people who deserve to be there um, but this is a very short span of time but your some of your seniors would be there. Idea is that I want to put you in touch with the people who are you know well known established guys in the world in the field of environmental geotechnics and they should be helpful in uh, either educating you or being an industrial partner. The whole idea is that we want to bring this technology to the Indian scenario. Most of these techniques are not being pursued in India at this stage and don't depend on us. We are now going to be in that 50 plus group. Fine, so we won't be doing anything except for teaching and preaching. But what I expect is that the guys who with whom I'm going to share 36 hours, precious hours of my life, should be doing something in their life. 
clear so if you are interested in this type of a motto uh, you please be in touch with them you can cite my name that i have asked you to be in touch with them everybody's profile is available another thing what i wanted you to do is please go to the editorial which i have written this has become obsolete and this is where i require more inputs from you people fine this is the volume 3 issue 3 you will this is not my editorial but you can go through the editorials which are being written by different people if you go to the issue 1 which was the inaugural issue of volume 1 and here you will find what i suggest is please go through the editorial which i wrote in 2011 you can download it this gives a brief background of the entire course or what we are going to discuss about just try to go through this fine